In computer vision and data science in general, there's one thing that you could for sure do to limit the performance of your model, and that is not understand your data pipeline. And this happens a lot in well curated data sets where the data is pretty clean, everything's kind of already done for you, the labeling is, even the labeling is well known, but people just take the data set, train a model with it, and you know, whatever the model spits out is whatever it spits out. And there was not a lot of thought into what the data was or what it, you know, what it invo invoked in the model. And I would just like to say that paying a small price to understand the data and to understand what's in it to a deeper level than just skimming through the paper will actually pay dividends on the end to allow you to train a better model and to actually generalize well, out of sample, without a sample data. And so in this video, we're going to learn just to work with the Cityscapes data set to do something called multitask learning. So multitask learning is just the, ta just the idea of training a single model to do multiple things. So in this case, we're going to train this model to take an RGB image and segment it and pr predict the depth map. So this is basically going to do regression or segmentation on this, uh, and which is classification and regression on this depth map at the same time. And in order to actually train this model successfully, we're going to need to understand the data from a little bit more intimate level than just you know chugging and plugging it in. So let's take a look at how this data set is labeled. So we're going to use the Cityscapes data set to train this model. And this video is just going to show how to work with this data. We're not going to actually train it here. That'll be for a different time. So this data has these cat main categories right here, and it's actually labeled into these subcategories. This ends up being, I believe, 34 total labels with a couple of dump cares, which is basically these voids right here. And if we look at this labels, Python file that was given with this data set, we actually have three different variants that we can use. We have the full variant, which just has all this stuff right here. For example, it's got stuff like, you know, that's uncommon, like guardrail, pull group. And if you want to train a model that's able to generalize well, you might not want to include stuff that's rarely given, like these, you know, kind of, you know, ambiguous categories, like, you know, what even is a pull group? So... This is where the second um, intermediate set comes in, where we have um, the set of don't cares like ego vehicle. We definitely don't want ego vehicle in if we want to generalize. And it also takes out the thing like pull group, makes that a don't care, makes license plate a don't care. So it makes certain things that don't come up as often a don't care, which basically helps our model not get confused when it comes to test time. And then finally, we have this last option where we can get this very general data set and you could argue that this this might be the best one but it really dep really depends on what you want like, want to get out of your model so there's this thing right here's level cat id so when i went through this data set i decided to train a model using train id i thought it was the most interesting and not as quite as hard as using the full blown data set with all the categories and we can see that in this data loader, this PyTorch data loader I made, I'm not going to go through all the details. It's very similar to any other data loader if you've already seen it. But essentially, we could do either flavor of categories in it. So something to note is in this right here, I actually added a crop because in every image right here, we get the ego vehicle and the input and the segmentation mask. And as mentioned earlier, that might not be good for generalization. So what we do instead is we crop it out. So with this data loader right here, we'll go through, start to go through this right here. So we have what's called the root. Um, any transformation, the train, the split, you know, the label map that we just went over and this crop argument, which I found that setting this to a certain value, and I forgot what it was, but it almost always, crops out the vehicle to the point where it's not going to interfere with our model. So 800 was the number. And I believe I ran that on several different images, did not run it through all of them, but I think you get the idea. So that being said, as soon as we get this 
we basically get our labels depending on which on which label that we want to get and then we get our images crop them we crop all of them in the same manner and we perform transformations and we make sure that this depth has nothing that's less than zero we don't want to confuse our model with negative depth that doesn't make any sense and then we return the sample as a dictionary so I think it's also important to understand some of the transformations that go in, at least for the depth map, because this comes to under this comes with understanding the data. So here's another notebook. I've already ran it. I am using a batch size of 64, and essentially what this notebook is doing, I'm sampling 64 random depth maps. And so here's a depth map right here. Here it is. So, and we can see this is a pretty large distribution, but there's nothing really that happens until once we get to under 500. So there's some sparse values all the way up to 4,000, it looks like, but nothing much really in between. So what I did was I cut the limit, the, the V limit to 500, and we can see it really cuts off at about 250, 250 meters. So what this tells me is maybe we want to cut it off after 250 meters. So what this depth map is, it's a stereo depth map. So it comes from two cameras that are side by side, and you can basically use triangulation to predict the depth once you know where each where, where each um where a point in the left camera is relative to the right camera. So I'm not going to get into that. These there's another video I can link in the bio below. We actually competed these depth maps with an algorithm called Cree Stereo, which is a pretty advanced model that's able to predict very smooth depth maps from disparity maps from stereo images. Then we use some um, cityscapes parameters to convert those to depth maps. So without going on a complete tangent, we decide to clip at 250 to basically discard in a way, find a way to discard this far away data because this data we don't want to just zero it out because that'll be confusing. But at the same time, we want to say, hey, we don't really care after 250. It's not very useful. And honestly, I would argue even after like 100, 150, depending on the application, it might not be useful then. But since we have a pretty nice distribution after 100, we'll keep it there anyway and go to 250. So this isn't the only thing we're going to do. Now notice we have this huge mode right here close to zero. So this huge mode at a very close range makes sense because when we have this depth map and it's inverted so it is further away but we can see in general most of these pixels right here if you even see this bottom half of the image most of these pixels are very close to the camera so we would expect you know even with half of this we'd expect most of the depth information to be centered around the lower number and we actually see this right here so this you know, being a neural network, we also want to be aware that we want the data to be in a very small range to help with convergence. So we see this is from 0 to 250. So we need to do another transformation. Now we could divide by 250, but we would still have this peak right here and this roll off. Um, I didn't test it, but I feel like the model would still be able to fit this distribution, but I would rather do something a little bit more well behaved. So for that reason, I took the log transform and have this little bit nicer distribution. And then I also divided it by five, which is an arbitrary number that I found that was able to keep it, you know, within a close to a zero to one range. And I do believe there's other ways to do this. Um, this is the best way I can think of. I'd be curious to know if there's a better way or if any of y'all would have done it differently. So with that being said, that has been added to this transforms. And we could go through this transforms real quick. So there's for this um, this project right here, it's just some very basic stuff, normalize, normalizing the input image with the image net trans, transformation, mean and standard deviation, um, doing this transformation on the depth with the same transformations we talked about previously, taking the clip, clipping it, taking the log and dividing it by five and we don't do anything to the mask. Uh, we use color jitter on the input image for training. And of course, you have a typical rescale. Um, something to note that's very important for this rescaling 
is to always use the mode nearest for the mask or else you're going to get off-put colors. For example, you'll get, say if this is a 4 and this is a 6, between this boundary right here, if you rescale it, you're going to get 5s right here because it's going to interpolate the, the thing in between. So you're going to want to make sure you do interpolation nearest when dealing with your transformations on a segmentation mask. And another reason why we do why we keep it in a dictionary is because we want to do the same transformation on everything. So for this random crop right here, we actually we get the parameters for the random resize crop with the same with the scale and ratio that we want and with the with a sampled original image size. And then we perform um, we have PyTorch functional transforms functional as TF and we just apply this resize crop transformation defined here on our input image right here and return this as a dictionary. And same thing right here. I have random rotate, uh, very similar to random crop. I decided not to use it. I always get strange. Seems like it messes things up when I use seg rotates for segmentation. So I don't, I don't bother, didn't bother to use it for this one. And then we have our typical horizontal and vertical flip transformations. And you can see, I have it right here. Here's the transformation stack. And we can go to this training set. Now you'll see this is not that we have, but since it's a random resize crop, we'll get random stuff every time. And this actually, you know, the randomization of this actually helps keep helps the model escape local local minima or saddle points during training. So that's essentially all of this. It's a just a hopefully a quick introduction. Hopefully, something that could get you started with cityscapes. Uh, something to get you thinking about what to look for when you're working with your data. Um, what to kind of seek out if you're having any issues. And hopefully this helped. So I'll see you in the next one.